Welcome. Uh, I'm I'm calling this lunch money. I want to do it. I want to do it more. <laughs> I want to do a a hangout on YouTube more. I did it on my phone yesterday, um, but today we're doing it on my computer, and so we'll see if the uh, if the quality's any better or if it's worse. Uh, I did it on my phone yesterday, and so it was like a, a vertical screen, um, which sucked because. Like, it's 2017. Nothing should be vertical ever. We live in a horizontal world. Um, is I, I think there's a way. Can you hear me, first of all, I guess? I, I, wanna, I, I want, like, a response from someone. Like, is that how we do it? Ch there we go, the chat. Is anyone here? In all caps, like I'm an old man. Uh, I just, I think chat is for, is for everyone. I'm gonna, I, I got my phone right here. I'm going to see if I can go on my phone and watch the stream right now. We're just waiting for people to get in here for the, um, the thrift store haul. So if you're here, you know, on lunch, stick around for a little bit longer. I'm still learning the basics of this, but it could be a thing that I, I like a lot. Let's see my channel, my phone. Um, videos. Okay, yeah, it says I'm live. So I think afterwards, I'll have to go in and change the thumbnail. Um, does it say if I... Oh, shit! Okay, so I'm getting, I'm getting the chat on my phone, but not on the, um, not on, uh, my computer. So that's messed up. All right. Sorry about all this troubleshooting. I know it's terrible and unprofessional. I'm the worst person that's ever lived. But, um, you know, you, you deal with it, I guess, right? Oh, my God. Okay. Uh, wait. So if I open it into my... <laughs> Let's see if it's going to pop up. I'm watching myself stream on, on two devices, so I'm, like, probably a third of the... Uh, lived. Uh-oh. But, uh, um... Oh, no. You know. Let's mute that real quick. Okay, it's muted. Okay, so I, I, I guess, I, okay, I see the chat. All right, all right. Let's, let's do this. Let's uh, show what I got the, uh, the other day. Um, it was last night after I worked, and then um, this morning I did a little bit of, uh, of fun thrift store stuff. What the frick? I'm trying to swear less. I, I think people who get upset by swearing are very foolish um, because I think they're just words. But like, likewise, if you believe that, uh, you can't, you can't want to say swear words because like they're just words, you know? It's like a logical paradox. Everybody like this too right now. I just liked it. There's seven of us here. Okay, I think I, think I have it taken care of. Um, Swearing, schmearing. All right. See now, now I, I see PJ and uh, Claire Smith and Leisure Reseller. So I think we're good to go. And I just like to start off. Uh, this is a pretty big haul. Um, I I got about. I think I spent four hundred bucks over the past two days, last night and this morning. Um, I'm trying to sell three thousand dollars a day of things. That's a million dollars a year. Um, I have a candy importation business that. Uh, picks up about um oh I got it right yeah Claire <laughs> um hey Nicholas awesome man I love to hear someone's paying their bills uh, advice on expanding um hire people it sucks find someone you can trust and teach them to do like methodical tasks I have no one here right now uh, I had three interns over the summer um like before Christmas is kind of my like low part of the year for my importation business. And then I'll have hopefully three more interns uh, next semester. So you really need to get people. Um, I'm going to hold off on the questions for a minute though, or like a half hour probably. Um, and then hopefully at 1245, I can get back into questions and then end this at one and make this into a, a routine thing. Um, I'm just going to start off with the electronics first, because that's really what I focus on mostly is a lot of electronics. Um, and this was yesterday at about 8 p.m. I hit up four Goodwills and Salvation Armies. And then this morning, I hit up one. 
um, and just bought uh, some really cool shoes, actually. But those will be later in the, uh, in the show. All right. It's Ten more people. Good to go. Uh, the first item I want to go, I'll, I'll go off of, I'll work, I'll work right to left. Um, is this right here? A Casio, uh, just a calculator. Um, it's a printable calculator, battery powered. I always check to see if there are batteries in the back. Uh, and if there are batteries, look for corrosion. You don't want corrosion. That really, really messes things up. Um, it's the Casio HR 100 TE. I paid uh, two bucks for it, but I used a coupon, so I paid a buck fifty for it. I don't pay full price for anything, and you should neither. Only dummies pay full price, or people who are just so rich that they don't care about anything. Uh, but the Casio HT or HR one hundred TE, I'm saying I bet it's worth twenty bucks. Twenty bucks. Here we go. Mini desktop printing calculator. Fifteen bucks. Very good condition. Shoot. Well, uh, so I'm using um, scan FBA scan right now. Fifty or a buck forty nine. I'm making eight dollars and two cents. So we're looking at a pretty huge ROI. Um, I do thrifting because you just get enormous ROIs. Oh, uh, yeah, Claire. No, I know it's insane. Uh, electronics sell so good right now. Over the summer. I sold like 600 VCRs, 600, if you can believe that. Truly amazing. Um, I didn't get any HDMI VCR DVD combos, but you want something fucking cool or freaking cool? I picked this up at a, at a um, repo auction or whatever they're called. Uh, let me move this junk out of the way. I'm still, I'm still here. But, but look at this. New in box. New in box, uh, DVD, uh, VCR recorder with the HDMI ports. Uh, I don't know what to do with this. Um, it's just it's a scam waiting to happen. You know, someone buys it and then returns it. Oh, it didn't work, and sends you back like uh, a used one. You know, it's almost like this is too valuable to sell. I I think probably if I found the right buyer, it'd go for seven hundred. But you know, they can just scam me. So I don't know. What to, I'm sitting on it. I don't know what to do. I paid like six dollars for it, so it isn't a huge deal. But I'm like, okay, you know, this stuff's this stuff's kind of tricky. Uh, so yeah, I showed you the Casio, nine bucks on that. Here's a Sony um, five CD changer. These are really good. I, any any uh, multiple CD changer, the five, the sixties, the three hundreds. I even sold a five hundred once, and that went for like it was like six hundred bucks. It was crazy. Any multiple CD player, uh, it says I paid twenty five for it. That is false. I paid twelve fifty for it. Um, green tags were half off, and this this thing goes for um, between seventy five and one hundred and fifteen dollars. And so I'll probably make off that twelve fifty investment. I would say I'll probably make seventy five profit. So again, you know, right there, we're looking at ninety three dollars. I'm gonna start keeping track of this actually. $93 profit on two items that I paid uh, a total of $14 for, right? I know. How much? Oh, I do Amazon FBA for everything. Um, yeah, I know. You, you know, I don't think it's nostalgia. Someone wrote nostalgia sells. I think that's true for a lot of the old toys I sell. But for these, I know someone who has like 500 Disney VHS tapes or like, you know, 80, 500 is an exaggeration, 80. And to convert those onto DVD or to buy new DVDs, you're looking at a pretty expensive purchase or investment. And so instead of doing that, you know, they're old people, whatever. They don't really care about, like, the newest qualities or behind the scenes of the Black Cauldron. Uh, they just want to watch it or they want their grandkids to watch it or they want their, day, their daycare kids to watch it, whatever it is. And so um, I think that it's people who are really married to an old media, not who are like, oh, I love watching this. Although it is true. there is. On Reddit, there is a um, a growing community of people who love to watch old, gory, you know, uh, C movie uh, horror horror movie it's horror movies on VHS. That's a mouthful. Shouldn't be, but it was for me. Um, and they get you know they do the whole like theme night, and they're like, "Oh, it's so terrible! Ha 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 ha! Like, look how great we are for 
being able to laugh at this at this miserable uh, movie that someone invested their life savings on. Next item. <laughs> Uh, it's a um, just a DVD player. Uh, white tags were seventy five percent off, so I paid eight bucks for it. I looked it up already. This goes for uh, I'll make thirty five profit off this. So um, we're looking at I, I've spent twenty one dollars. Oh, I gotta write this down. Okay, I'm gonna leave again, but I'm not going for good. Stay here. I'm still here. <laughs> I didn't go. Oh. All right, some plain white paper to uh, do my accounting on. Let's see. So that was uh, 150, 12, 50, and what is 75% or 25% of 17? That would be like what four dollars and twenty five cents, four twenty five, and then off those I made nine seventy five thirty five. Looking good. All right, item three: a Toshiba standard VCR player. Same deal. Um, white tags were a huge discount at the Salvation Army. I paid four twenty five for it. And it'll go, and I'll make 35 bucks off of it. FBA, it'll take probably a month to sell. Um, ooh, Sony Hi-Fi Stereo uh, VCR. Now, I've noticed that the Hi-Fi VCRs, I don't know if there's an actual difference in the quality um, or how it looks, but I do know that they, they, they're worth more. This one, FBA, in this condition, without the, without the remote, I don't sell remotes with anything, I just test to make sure it turns on, um, and I, you know, even this one right here, it's got a, uh, it's got a tape in it, so I'll take that tape out and I'll, I'll disinfect it. But this one, in this condition, is going for like one nineteen. It's truly crazy. It's got, you know, the hi-fi quality, and it's also a Sony. Um, it's the Sony SLV seven seven nine HF, and I will look it up just to be fair, just to be fair right now on FBA scanner. That's the the, the app I use. It really does a good job showing you how much money you're making off it. I think it costs like, I don't know, it's like seven bucks a month. If you're if you're if you're making more than a thousand bucks a month selling things, um, you should definitely, you should definitely uh, invest in this. Oh, uh, I do sell remotes, but I sell them separately. I don't sell them with the item. I package them in a little uh, bubble mailer, like this right here. It's a small little. Uh, I think it's a. O O or O zero 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 size uh, bubble mailer. Put it in here, wrap it up. And I sell them individually, uh, and I make more money that way. Unless the remote's worth like seven bucks and all, but but some of these remotes for these old Sony players go for twenty, twenty five, thirty bucks, and you don't see that increase in price in the listing with the remote. Um, I use FBA scan in the Goodwill store, uh, Mark H ten. So it's yeah, it's really it's really easy for me. Um, I have unlimited data and I get coverage everywhere except for one one stupid store that um, I just have to go in and guess on stuff. But mostly, you know, for the most part, I know what I'm buying. I've been doing this. I've been selling online for like 15 years. For yeah, 15 years. Um, FBA scan. I I don't think it. Is. I think you get like 10 free scans or something. I, I don't know. I pay way too much money for stupid things like this. I should really be like cutting back on my expenses. I, I, I realized that I had been paying $9 a month for some Amazon feedback scanner uh, that was, or Amazon feedback reporter. Like if you get bad feedback, it automatically challenges it. But I had been paying 25 bucks a month for a product doing the same exact thing, but better. And so I, I really got to, you know, that, that's me wasting a hundred bucks a year just doing stupid stuff. But I know that the Sony Hi-Fi uh, VCR, Sony SLV 779HF, 779HF. I don't know if the, the quality is high enough. Yeah, 130, 130 right here. Look at that. That's beautiful. 130 FBA. Um, I paid 398 for it. And so out of 398, I am going to make... A hundred dollars and sixty-three cents. Got 
damn we'll just say a hundred even you know i gotta pay i gotta pay 60 cents to mail it to amazon that's why i love fba the lowest used price for merchant fulfilled is 96 dollars lowest fba price is 130 i know it's great i love it so right here one two three four five five items i'm looking at 250 bucks profit almost yeah um i bubble wrap them um i have a video about it on my channel don't watch it yet but watch it eventually like after i'm done uh it just basically i just wrap them and then stretch wrap it um and then put the fba sticker on and, and mail them off i don't do pallets because in my warehouse i don't have a uh um a deck or whatever it is so we have to use like a lift gate and for whatever reason the freight company that amazon contracts out to i'm in detroit in my area doesn't do lift gate stuff so it's just like okay well thanks guys for being a bunch of idiots um next item high definition multimedia interface it's a dvd player uh yeah cd dvd player it was um you know 16 bucks it's a sony uh i didn't pay 16 for it i paid eight for it uh and this item it's the uh c uh sony dvp which means dvd player ns70h uh slv is v the vcr prefix for sony uh dvp is the um dvd player prefix they I, I sony is great because they use uh prefixes for all their um all their items even the controllers like playstation controllers are scph like 1200 1080 they're very methodical about it and it makes it makes sourcing easier ns 70h i'm gonna guess this one's worth 50 bucks oh no this dvd player right here $73.70. On the $8 I paid, I'll be making $47 profit. Sales rank is $350, so it might take about four months to sell. But for um, you know, a, a five, a five X of my money, I uh I am not complaining. Eight into 40, I'll say 48. I'll I rounded down for the last one. I'm rounding up now. All right, uh, I'll answer some quick questions now. Let's see. Oh yeah, thank you, fortunate one. Yeah, it's really, really easy. Um, bubble wrap and shrink wrap, and it, it works a wonder. I have, I have, I had too many returns on printers. I'm kind of backing off from printers, but I hardly get any returns ever on like DVD players, VHS players, CD players. Um, really, it's only the the printers, and that's because people buy them are morons and don't know how to install the driver. Um, it's just, it's that simple. I get them back and they work fine, but the people who buy them are just, they're a bunch of Luddites who don't know what computers are. And I'm truly amazed. They even had the intellectual capability to go online, put their credit card number in and buy something. It, it, it truly is baffling. Do I check them with a universal remote? Um, no, I don't. I turn them on. Uh, I make sure all the functioning works. I give them a listen. I give them a shake. Um, I have never had a VCR that turned on that didn't play. That's the fact of the matter. Um, I maybe I'm lucky. Maybe I've had buyers who just don't care. But it's uh, you know broken VCRs when they're when they're broke. It's because like one of the the whatever they're called the bands is cut or something. It's um you know it's not rocket science. Next item, I paid eight twenty eight for this eight dollars and twenty eight. It is a Toshiba, but here's what's cool about it. It's a DVD recorder. These are these are just gold. Anybody who resells consumer electronics knows, look out for your VHS double deck recorders and your uh, VCR, sorry, DVD recorders. Uh, this is the uh, Toshiba. Oh, it's got an HDMI port too. I didn't even realize that. I didn't even look this up when I bought it. Um, I just knew right away it was worth a lot of money. It's the DVD recorder. Uh, Toshiba DKR10. I bought it for eight twenty eight with no coupon. Um, I know I said coupons, and I, I know I just contract myself. But this one place I go doesn't take coupons, but they're dirt cheap anyways. So like, you know, whatever. Uh, let's look it up though. Let's give it a look. I want to see what do you think it's gonna be. There's there's like twenty of you in here right now. What do you think this is worth? The Toshiba DKR10, and if you look it up, you're a cheater. <laughs> Toshiba. 
I can't spell this. D K R 10. Let's see. Sales rank is 160K. Ah, 88. That's lower than I thought it would be. Damn. I thought it'd be like, like 200. There's three listings of this. That's so weird. So when you look in FBA scanner, you can see like all the listings and there's three and they're all very unprofessional. If I was a nicer person, I would go through and merge all these. Um, with uh, Amazon seller support, but I'm not going to. Yeah. So, you know, whatever, 80 bucks off this. Um, I paid eight twenty eight. $88.66 and cents is the lowest one. I paid eight twenty eight. FBA scan tells me I'm making sixty bucks. Eight into sixty. You know, I love that I can be mad about eight into sixty, right? Yeah, throw it out. <laughs> it's garbage. Uh oh dude, nice Nicholas. Using your girlfriend to get a discount. That is that's smart. I would date someone just for that, I think. <laughs> this next item. Six ninety six. This is a weird one right here. Um, I bought it again without looking because, first of all, for seven bucks, I will try anything. But um, the real reason I bought it is because it's a mini disc player, a mini disc. You know, I don't know when these were popular, what they were used for. Um, I don't know how much memory it takes. I just know it's a weird, outdated, um, a weird, outdated form of media, and that generally means with a lot of money. This might be more of the nostalgia stuff that one of you was talking earlier. Um, yeah, there's no mini disc. There's no disc in here. I can't. I can't. And it's got this weird, like exposed circuit board type deal right here. I don't know what that is. For six ninety six, though. Um, Let's see if it turns on. Let's see if it turns on. I probably, I probably should have done this earlier <laughs> and tested this. Let's see if it turns on, though, right? If it blows up and I die, you guys got a great show. Uh, oh! Did you hear that? It's making a weird clicking noise. I have no clue, man. Yeah, you can hear that. That's... Is it, it's something stuck in here, I think. I just turned it off. So that's gonna, this is gonna take some, this is gonna take a little bit of, uh, a little bit of exploration. I'm gonna cut this open. I think a mini disc is stuck in here. It's, yeah, though, you know, like you said, oh, things always work. And finally, when I show you, it doesn't work, right? The own picks for FBA. I do FBA. I don't take my own picks for any listing. Um, yeah, it does sound, yeah, yeah, chattery. I don't, so what it could be something spinning and it sounds like it's touching something else. And so it's either like a, a jam disc that won't let the, um, the, the belt make like a, a, a full, um, rotation without like molestation or, um, that's really all I can imagine. It also appears to be a small burn mark here, but it turns on fine. I'm going to open this up. Take a look at it uh, because this thing probably is worth like two hundred dollars or like one hundred and fifty if it's working. Um, it's the Sony MDS JE three hundred and twenty. Sony MDS JE three hundred and twenty. Yeah, three hundred bucks. So glad I bought it. That's messed up. It's making that noise. Oh shit, it's doing it again. Ah, oh, it's possessed. Um Oh yeah, okay, I see it now. Okay, so there's there's a let me turn this off. There's a gear in there and the gear fell off of like the little stick holding it in place. And so the gear is spinning and then it touches another gear also inside there and it's the two teeth of the gear rubbing against each other. Wow. Well, that's the thing that happens to these. Now you know. Yeah, but for 300 bucks, you know, honestly, I bet I could sell it, you know, for parts on eBay for 100 bucks um, if I can't fix it. And if I'm right, it's an easy fix. Just like a buy a, a little plastic gear and replace it. Next item. A Samsung 
DVD home theater system, the HTX70. This is a part of a larger item. It's part of a whole surround sound system. And so these don't sell so good. The thing about these on Amazon, you don't sell these used because many people are not, um, yeah, I hope I can fix it because, <laughs> because many, I'm reading the comments, you guys are funny. Uh, many of the listings, people don't want to sell, I'm losing my train of thought. People are, um, yeah, right, good. Make some money, fortune, fortunate one. Many of the people selling these surround sound systems don't want to sell the receiver only. But conversely, oftentimes, only the receiver is broken. And so there's kind of a good, um, a good, some good wiggle room there. I paid, uh, I paid $7 about for it. Um, and it's the uh, Samsung HT X70. Let's look it up together. I'm saying I can make 100 bucks off this. But it's going to take a long time. HT X70. What the hell? It's all just it's all just internal components. Okay, so what I did is I looked at, so sometimes when you're using um FBA scanner or the Amazon seller app, you have to play around with uh like the, the model, the model name. So I I uh in FBA scanner I, I looked up um Samsung HDX scanner and a bunch of like computer parts came up, assembly HDMI parts. But then I looked at it without the hyphen, which is incorrect, and it showed the correct item. This is yeah, yeah. Whoa. Okay, so in home audio it's a thousand, but it's the entire the entire unit, and it looks like it's selling for yeah, around a hundred bucks. So eight dollars. I'll make I'll list it at 115, 120, I'll get hundred out of it. And it'll probably sell in two months. Here, this one is with the DVD. It's a another ooh, a Toshiba DVD, DVD R, DVD RAM recording unit right here. With the remote. Um, yeah, and that's the right remote. It is an universal remote. Toshiba DR4SU with the remote. This one probably works it looks it's in good condition that's a relatively newer one it doesn't have the HDMI output but it's very very clean and clean things usually work I know they say don't judge a book by its cover but if you're selling books you're gonna want to look at the cover right <laughs> Toshiba D hyphen R S R4 R4 SU Hundred bucks. I put in. Let's see. Wow. I put in six fifty on that. That's all it cost. Six fifty. I'll make seventy one bucks out of that. So again, we're ten xing our money. Uh, seventy seventy one. And then you know, just for the sake of this, I'm gonna put down. Uh, what I paid for that mini disc recorder, and I'm gonna put zero for profit, just to just to keep it even, you know, just 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 to to make it not seem like I'm lying about how much money I'm making. All right, uh, last second to last electronic item it appears is this a Sony uh, Dream Machine with a um, with a cassette recorder on it. Cassette stuff sells pretty good. I checked this in the store; it was half off, so I paid four fifty for it. Um, it works fine. It's very, very dirty, but I'll just take a toothbrush to it, clean it up before I sell it. I looked at that in the store, and it, it's going for uh, like 40 bucks, so I'll make 28 off of it. So I turned four bucks into 28. All right. Uh, oh, last, last electronic right here. Sony PlayStation, $6. Um, I make about 30 off these after it's done with FBA fees. Uh, so, you know, six into 30, no big deal. Um, this one, I didn't test it in the store. A lot of times these will have, um, disc reading errors, which are like, uh, this right here just gets dirty. Uh, but it looks clean to me. I don't see any corrosion. I don't see any like dirt or cigarette smoke in here. Uh, so I took a risk, you know, for six bucks. 
even if it's broken, um, because the um, the open CD open eject button works well, I can even just use the parts on like a broken a broken case for another PlayStation if it doesn't work. So, you know, even even if I can't resell it, I'm not out money because I'll I'll need those parts over again. Uh, a Bop It XL. This was uh, it was two fifty. Um, I bought it because I sold one on eBay uh, two weeks ago for 20, 20 bucks in a lot worse condition, and they're light. They weigh about eight ounces, so you can mail it first class mail. Uh, so I paid two seventy to ship it. Uh, I'm, so I'm like five twenty in this. If I can get twenty bucks out of it, um, you know, I'm looking at at, at fifteen dollars profit. Um, a little less, I guess. We'll say we'll say thirteen dollars profit. So two fifty into thirteen. This right here, Statler, Marsmatic 700, brand new, fancy pencils. Uh, also, the entire package is in German, made in Nuremberg, it says here. I paid, uh, you know, I hate when they do this. Goodwill puts these stickers on, and it tears off the original, original artwork sometimes. Oh, I feel so bad. I feel so bad, but I have to. I paid 2 for this. Um, this set, if it was brand new, like current, whatever, would go for um, around 40 bucks. But it's very, very old, and it doesn't appear to have ever been used. Yeah, doesn't appear to have ever been used. Um, and I looked up some, some comparable listings, and they went for around 90 bucks. Um, but that was in like mint condition. And so with this, with the mark, I, I got it in this um, this uh, color eroding off the edges. I listed it at fifty, and I think it'll sell because um, it's you know it's old, it's vintage. It's got it's got a look to it. Uh, it looks like it's seen it's it's seen some stuff over there in Nuremberg. Uh, they all have, I guess. Um, so yeah, I paid a buck fifty for it. Yeah, it was three dollars on sale for a buck fifty. And I think I'll make about 40 bucks profit off this. This right here, if you follow me on Twitter, which you all should. Um, oh, they, they were pens. Yeah, they're, sorry, I didn't realize this. They're, they're like, they're pens. They're like artist pens. Um, you follow me on Instagram and Twitter, which my name is WB Knobloch. W-B, then the letters K-N-O-B-L-O-C-K, which is also my last name. You will see I bought this. For the uh, wonderful price of five dollars, it's a Fred Flintstone talking toy. There are it's it's from like the Rosie O'Donnell boot. You know what's really nuts though? If you look on the back, they've got it, there were four there were four toys made for this movie. Um, the the rhinoceros, Bam Bam, Pebbles, and Fred. Fred was played by John Goodman. Uh, and so he has a John Goodman face, but he's the only doll, the only toy out of the entire collection that has a human face. The rest, if you can tell on the back, they're just like doll faces. So you have like a weird family of dolls, and then <laughs> John Goodman forcing a grin through like 16 heart attacks. He does not look good anymore. Ooh. But anyways... There are, are no comparables for sale. So for 50 bucks on eBay about a year ago, eight months ago. But I'm going to list it at 100 bucks on Amazon FBA. See if I get any bites around Christmas. Um, oh, bef oh, this? The, the Dream Machine? You don't know what the Dream Machine is? It's the Dream Machine. It's a, it's a, it's a Dream Machine. It's like a, a, a radio alarm wake-up thing for dreaming and stuff. Yeah, I'm gonna put the Flintstones toy at um, 100 bucks. See if I get any bites. Uh, I am fairly certain it'll sell at around 75. I'm hoping like I get a, a Christmas rush, and um, that you know, 80 bucks after fees. I'll say 75. Next toy, a 3D Cinderella puzzle. Um, this one was 4.94. I bought it at that place that has weird pricing. It's got a dent here. Um, I will still sell it as in new condition, even though I know you're not supposed to. If I have the option for collect collectible status, I'll sell it as like new and I'll put a picture of it. Um, if not, I found you can get away with blaming Amazon FBA for these like uh, little nicks in the shipment. 
I paid four ninety four for it, and I opened it up when I was in the store. It's going for around forty five bucks, and out of that forty five, I'll make thirty five. All right, time for the close this morning. Oh no, never mind. Two more items. Um, my laptop's currently on them. The first one is a printer. I know I said I'm not doing printers anymore, um, but I I am doing some printers. My rule is small printers, printers that I can put in like a Home Depot box. They don't have to go out of my way to buy an oversized box for. I'll still sell those. This is the Epson XP40. It's a printer with Wi-Fi in it, and I saw it for like seven fifty, and it goes for two hundred dollars. And out of that two hundo, I'll make a buck seventy-five profit off of that. Um, it's moderately large, so you know, ten xing your money more than that, twenty xing your money. Um, you know what? What else am I supposed to do? Not buy it? You think I'm crazy? And then beneath it is another um, home surround sound unit like the Samsung HTX70 I had earlier mentioned. Um, yeah, the dream machine makes dreams. Um, and this is uh, this one, let's see. Yeah, it's a Philips, very similar surround sound unit. Um, I'm going to list it without the speakers. I paid 8 bucks for it. It'll, it'll go for 100 and I'll make 80 Now on to the clothing items. The clothing items. Um, the shoes. I bought two pairs of Jordans for three fifty a piece. So seven bucks for these two. These are early two thousand Jordans. Anything I see Air Jordan, I'll buy um, for less than five bucks. Just because, even though they've got some wearing on the toes and the toe cap is coming off of these, um, there are guys who will buy these shoes just to fix them up, and then they'll resell them as refurbished for like two hundred or no two hundred and like one fifty. Here are the prices I saw on, on Amazon. And so um, I can sell both these in a bulk lot uh, to save on shipping because, as you know, shipping shoes sucks. I'll list it at 50 uh, free shipping, and I'll make, you know, 40 bucks off – or, no, I'll make 35 bucks off these shoes. This is a, a pair of um, Allen Edmonds loafers. I don't know a lot about shoes. There are people who sell a lot more shoes than me. Uh, but I do know when I see a nice pair of loafers like this with like a real smooth leather on the side, I'll look the name up. Um, and if, you know, per chance the eBay comps are like above 50 bucks, I'll buy them. Sure enough, first comp I looked up for um, Allen Edmonds loafer was $95. Uh, and it was in better condition than these. These have some wear in the heels. Um, I'll need to polish them up, but they have no tears, uh, and they are a size 10, size 10D, so like a regular, uh, slightly um, slightly wide shoe. You can see right here that the sole's coming up. I still think I can get 40 bucks for these, um, and I paid 350 so again, not bad. All right, more clothes, more, more clothes. I bought a bunch... Oh, this is interesting. This is very interesting. So, uh, at a thrift store in Walled Lake, Michigan, I found like 25 insane clown posse t shirts. ICP, like the band that has been deemed a gang by the FBI. I found 25 brand new ICP tour t shirts for a buck a piece. And so I bought them all. Um, it's just like the, the members of the group they go with. I think it was like the Weed and Welcome or Weed and Farewell Tour or something. I don't know. It, I, I didn't really pay attention to it. What I cared about was that, A, it's a band. It's a niche market with rabid fans. And when I'm describing ICP, I mean rabid in the most literal sense. And secondly, it's new. You know, new. Why wouldn't I buy something new? What? Oh, this? This toy. Claire. Claire, no, it's a Boppet XT. It's just a Bop it. it's a toy. You know, you, you go, you, you hit hit it, and it says Bop it. And then it goes flick it, and you flick it, and it goes spin it, and you, you know, spin it. Pull, pull it. Plastic. Wow. It's a, this is a volume control. That's, okay, so this this is something. I guess I, okay, this better not start. No. Nope. Oh, and the, oh, I see. You even shake it here. Putting this away. This is 
It's going to be, God damn it, it's going off now. I'm, enough of that. Back to the close. Right here. It's going to be going off the entire rest of the video. Polo jeans. Good. Go to sleep, you idiot. Polo sleep, uh, large sweater. I paid uh, five bucks for it. Uh, Nike vintage crew neck XL it's brown. Um, I'll bundle this probably. I've got a few of those, and I'll bundle all the XLs together. Uh, similar one right here, I believe. Yeah, Nike crew neck XL. Paid two bucks for it. Um, two bucks again right here for this T-shirt. It's a, uh, I think it's a Wings throwback shirt. Yeah, it's a '97 Wings Stanley Cup shirt. Pretty cool. It's got a bleach stain on the on the sleeve. It looks like right here. So uh, I didn't notice that initially. It's a large, and I paid two bucks for it. So I'll probably just uh, put it with some of my other wing stuff and auction it off in a lot. You can auction off sports teams um, or like any any anything that's like a niche. So like I have a lot of Barack Obama stuff. Well then I'll sell that together. Or I have a lot of Red Wing stuff. I'll sell it together. And someone who loves stuff is gonna um is gonna buy it. Uh, I'll go back and answer a few questions now. Um, let's see. Okay, Claire asked what the thing was at the bop it. Mark, you're right. It's a dream maker. It makes dreams. Yeah, old items do sell. It's crazy. Nicholas sells bop it frequently. I think people like them. I don't know. You know, I bought another bop it, um, like the little stick, like the simple version, and that sold in like two days too. Uh, do I ever do drop shipping? Sorry, loaded question. Maybe you have a video. I don't do drop shipping. I think drop shipping is dumb. Like, I, I don't want to sit in my basement and click buttons for a 6% margin, you know? Occasionally, if I sell an item on eBay, like, like a DVD, for example, and it's scratched beyond repair and I've already sold it, I'll drop ship off like Amazon or like, you know, Discogs or something or another eBay seller. But the way I, my business is run, it's all like, you know, high, high margin, high risk items. Um, and I FBA all of it. And so like, I just, I don't get excited about, you know, selling a salt lamp for 20 bucks that I can buy from Alibaba for 14. That just doesn't do it for me. So no, I don't drop ship. Although there are lots of people who do, I make a bunch of money. And if you do that, don't be like, Oh, you're so dumb. Like, I love it. Like, listen, it's your life, man. You, you can drop, you could drop ship yourself. I don't care. Next item, Arizona Cardinals. Cool throwback crew neck. Uh, they had a, a lot of these cool sweatshirts uh, on the back. It's kind of coming unsewn. But again, for two bucks, you know, why Why not? Um, this right here, I might keep this. This one is in amazingly good condition for how much white material there is. It's a Aeromax American flag shirt with a Ford... No, no Ford decal. Yeah, with a Ford trucks decal on the bottom. Um, it's got a little bit of, uh, of pink from the washer, it looks like, right here. But it's so white. I think you just bleached that out, maybe. I don't know. I'm probably wrong. I don't clean many clothes. But, like, for a, a clothing item so white, I got I to gotta assume, you know, worst case scenario, I'll take the sleeves off. If I really can't fix it, I'll just cut the sleeves off, wear this badass American flag, Sleeveless button-down shirt. I paid a buck eighty for it. I'll, of course, I will. Um, right here, a big old ugly sweater. It's ugly sweater season. Ugly sweater season, my friends. You can buy this repulsive, repugnant garbage. Say it's a coogie knockoff ugly sweater and sell it for thirty bucks. It's crazy. It's crazy how you know OxyClean. Oh, I'll do OxyClean. Cool. No, I love selling these hideous sweaters. I don't know why they're popular. I do know why, because, like, you know, Biggie, Warm, whatever. But that was 20 years ago. I would never be caught dead wearing this. It looks uncomfortable. It's ugly. But will I sell it for 30 bucks? Will I, will I make 20 bucks off of an item I, I invested $2 in? Yeah, yeah, of course. I'm not doing um, profit on the clothes because the clothes are real hit or miss, and I don't know if they're going to sell. I might auction it off. So it's not as guaranteed as the FBA. 
But um, basically, my rule for clothing is uh, I want to make 10 bucks on it, at least 10 bucks. Um, and that's not, a, you know, I probably shouldn't be buying it, but I am anyways. Uh, it's definitely the lowest margin item I sell, but it's fun. You know, it's fun to go out and buy clothes and sell them. LL Bean mock turtleneck. I have like 18 of these. I, um, I, 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 I put the LL Bean turtlenecks in lots and I sell them for about 10 bucks a pop. So I'll sell like 50 for 50 bucks and I'll put it in a pad rate mailer and make 40 off of it. And generally I'm not paying more than a dollar or two for these, um, LL Bean turtlenecks. And the reason they sell so well is because LL Bean has a, a lifetime warranty. So whenever you see Patagonia or Eddie Bauer or LL Bean, um, those are the big, the big brands I can think of that have lifetime warranties or at least repair uh, policies. They're going to have a higher um, margin um, or a higher sale value than most other things, just because, uh, like I said, it's the um, you know it's it's a lifetime warranty. Uh, how does one learn popular trending brands of clothing? You go on eBay, you type in sweater or jeans, uh, and then you see what's been selling. You know. Uh, that it's just it's got you know it's research. Um, does J Crew have a lifetime warranty? I don't know if they do or they don't. Um, part out when he broke stuff like the mini disc. Yeah, yeah, Mark, you're right. Um, I'm gonna try and I think it's an easy fix in the mini disc player. If you if you're new, there's people coming in and out constantly. Um, if you're new, the mini disc I I had earlier uh, made the terrible clicking noise and there were gears grinding. And so, like the value working is three hundred bucks. I paid like around seven or six dollars for it. Um, and so, even as parts, it's going to be a, a, a profitable endeavor. More clothes. I bought three bags of clothes. Right here, Kelvin Klein extra large men's uh, men's sweater. It was um, yeah, it was four dollars. That'll that'll you know sell it for twenty bucks. It'll sell in, in a couple of days probably. Here they are. Here's the beginning of the ICP shirts. Ooh, I, yeah, it, they were half off. So the buck nine nine half off. So I actually paid less than a dollar for them. Um, this is uh, who is this? Is it Blaze? Maybe I don't know. I should know this. I guess. I mean, I know it's ICP because you got the running the running man in the back. <coughs> it looks like it says Blake. That's my name, though, and I am not this guy. More ICP shirts. And they're all the same size, too. They're all XLs, so that makes listing easy. Um, here we go. Twisted World of Weeds Tour. Same thing. Uh, these are just dudes who rap about, you know, Red Pop and Fago and I don't know. What else? Trailer Parks, I guess? I don't know. I haven't listened to ICP in a minute. Cool throwback, University of Michigan, 93. Is it a bowl game shirt? No, Final Four basketball shirt. Uh, put this at 40 bucks. Anything throwback in good condition will go for 40 bucks. Um, I found, and if it doesn't, after a few months, I just auction it off and usually uh, usually make about 10 bucks on it. <coughs> Do you ever shop at places like TJ Maxx? I mainly thrift. Um... You just make so much more money on thrift stores. And I live around Detroit. And so we have like 75 thrift stores here. It's great. More ICP. This looks like the guy from Green Day a little bit. It's not, though. His name is Monoxide. He's a bad man. Let's see. Monoxide. More, more Monoxide ICP stuff. Uh, ICP. 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 Mickey Mouse shirt. This one says Michigan Mickey Mouse. Mickey Mouse stuff sells. Sells for 15 bucks. Bought it for a dollar. This one right here is pretty cool. It's a, uh, just a throwback Nike. I'll probably bundle this with the crew next I got. Have like a, you know, a, a Nike, uh, Nike throwback auction or, or lot. And, you know, make, make 10 or 15 bucks an item. Uh, and hopefully sell it fast. This right here. I don't know why I bought this. It's going to go on my Etsy. It's just so weird. It's a Niagara Falls pullover. But, like, have you ever seen a more, like, early 90s clothing item in your entire life? I haven't. And I've, I was there. I was alive in the 90s. 
Packers jersey. Go pack. I like the I like the Packers. My girlfriend hates them. You know, I know I'm from I'm from Michigan, so I'm not supposed to like the Packers. I don't like Aaron Rodgers. But I do like the Packers. It's an XXL. I might keep this. Uh James Brooks. Was he 87? I don't know. I'll have to look it up. 87 on the Packers. I, I saw Brooks. I thought it was James Brooks. But 87 is a running back. It's not a, a running back number. It's a wide receiver number or a, a tight end number. Um, I'm going to look it up right now. If anybody knows who 87 was on the Packers, whose name is Brooks, let me know. Comment. There's, there's, a, there's a few of you here. Somebody can say something. Or look it up before me and you win. You win nothing, though. I give out no, no charity. Jane, or no, let's see. Brooks, Packers, 87. Packers, 87. I said packets. Great. I meant, of course, I don't mean packets. Robert Brooks. I don't know who that is. Oh, wow. He played for the Broncos from 92 to 98. I'm sorry, for the Packers. Yeah, dude, he was a wide receiver, 87. Comeback player of the year. I won a, won a Super Bowl with them. Huh, so he was just like the uh, probably the, the guy behind Antonio Freeman. Cool. More ICP. Jesus Christ, a lot, of, a lot of ICP here. Wow. This might be a Blake shirt. Yeah, it's a Blake shirt. It's an LL Bean men's XXL tall. <laughs> That's... Right up my alley. I love LL Bean. I went to their store in, in Maine on like a vacation, and I bought the boots I'm wearing right now. I am very frugal, but will I? I spent a hundred bucks on a pair of, of waterproof boots from LL Bean that were regular two twenty five and have a lifetime warranty. Hell yeah, I'll do that. ICP, ICP. All these crisp black T-shirts are ICP. This is a. Uh, Clareborne, XL Tall shirt. I think he can keep, keep this too, actually. This right here. Now, this was a shot in the dark. I don't know how much it's going to sell for. I've never sold this brand before. But it's Fila Sport. And it's a real bombastic-looking design. Um, it's got Fila Sport right there. Fila has been getting more and more popular over the past two years. It's XL, so a good size. Um, I think I might I might just uh, put on an auction and see where it goes and use it kind of as like a, a, a you know a test to see if I can buy more feel of sports stuff. Here's a cool NASA throwback sweatshirt. Um, it's got the copyright or sorry a t-shirt 1998 copyright in the bottom down here. Uh, so it's got that um you know that uh, hallmark whatever you want to call it. Also, it's got Pluto. Is it Pluto's a planet? Wait, uh, so, oh, yeah, yeah, it's got Pluto's a planet. So we know it's at least, you know, prior to 2008 or whenever the scientists went and ruined my, my life and said Pluto's no longer a planet. Um, some sweaters here. This is a, uh, a vintage Woolrich sweater with some ducks on it. Uh, this is worth a, a decent amount of money. Um, I couldn't find any comps. But vintage Woolrich is uh, is pretty in demand, so I think I'll put it at like fifty bucks probably, uh, and see how it sells. And then this right here, another hideous sweater, Izod Club, hand in Tarsia. I don't know what that means, but it's like a disgusting golf, stupid '90s golf sweater, and it's huge. It's got to be a two XL. It's a, okay. It's a large. This is a big large. This is a you know maybe for a large family you could use it. This is huge. I mean it's got it's got to be thirty five inches across. That's enormous. But yeah, ugly sweater, thirty bucks. We'll see if it sells. And that uh yeah, and that's it. That is the uh, the show. Started a little bit late, so I apologize. Um, let's just do like ten minutes of uh <laughs> of questions. If you guys have any questions, would love to answer them. Um. Yeah, I'm going to try and do this. I don't know how often the, uh, the schedule is going to be. You know, every day seems a bit much, but once a month seems like not enough. And so I'll probably, um, whenever I have a thrift store haul, I'll just do it live. I would love to do it every lunch. That'd be so cool. Um, and call it lunch money because, like, I love puns. 
<laughs> but we'll see. We'll see how the audience is. If you like this, you know, like obviously. Um, tell your friends about it. Say like, hey, I saw this live show and this guy Blake. It's kind of weird, but he knows his stuff on garbage is strange on the internet. <laughs> I would really appreciate that. Um, but yeah, it's one oh five. Let's do questions until like one fifteen, and then I'll be out of here. Uh, or there might be no questions. I don't know. We'll see. I'll go through. I'll see if I miss any questions um, in the, the live chat. You guys were great. Who was chatting too, by the way. Let's see. Going through. I'm going through. I am located in Detroit. Um, someone said, why don't you sell remotes? I do sell remotes. I sell them, um, separately. I'm going to show Claire saying, holy shit, because I, I am all for, for swear words. Yeah. I showed, if you're curious about how I prepped them, I have a video prepping, uh, consumer electronics, just bubble wrap, um, leisure reseller. Oh, yeah, dude. Flipping VHS and multi-DVD players is always, always a huge win. Ted Bear. I sold one printer and never again. Moron returned it because the ribbon didn't last long enough. Yeah, dude, that's selling printers in a nutshell. I hate selling printers. But, like, there's so, so much money. Uh, are they considered medium mail? No. Medium mail is books, DVDs, uh, CDs, mini discs, and I think video games. I don't know. I use video games as media mail, but I don't know if that's like technically okay. Let's see. <laughs> uh, do I take my own picks for FBA or do I piggyback off existing picks? If it's a collectible item, like if it's a used board game, I'll take a picture, list as merchant, and then convert to Amazon fulfilled. So it's FBA with my own pictures. But otherwise, I just use whatever picture Amazon is using. Um, yeah, there was a little leprechaun in that mini disc player. <laughs> uh, have I ever considered private label? I do. I do private label. I'm not going to say what it is. Because private labels kind of fishy where like I don't want someone to come in here and like just undercut me. Um, but I do. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. I've got about 15 products I private label. Um, and that's where probably uh, half of my Amazon money comes from. Um, I mostly just thrift because it's fun and I like making videos and I want to help people make money. Because they really can go out with, you know, if you just bought these one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, these 11 electronics that I, that I had bought earlier, um, you would have spent four, eight, 15, $75 and made about, let's see. Made about $800. So you would have 10 extra money. Um, I, I'm not going to say what I'm private labeling. It's, uh, stuff that I import. Um, I just don't want someone to come in and take it. Uh, oh, but yeah, vinyl records are also, um, arbitrage. Let's see. Here's some newer questions. Uh, how much do you mind? Does your company net a year? Uh, I don't say how much I net. Um, just because taxes and that kind of stuff. Um, I have a company called Bo Candy that imports candy. And that does revenue around uh, half a million, 400000 And then we also sell products on eBay and uh, Amazon. I'd say eBay is probably $75,000 a year revenue, maybe more. Um, and then Amazon is probably half a million uh, revenue over the past 12 months. Um, no, less than that. Probably 300000 over the over the past 12 months. But in this calendar year, so... From January 1st to December 31st, my estimation is half a million. And then over the next 12 months, I'd like to make a, a million dollars revenue on Amazon, but we'll, we'll see how that works. Oh, Corey, you missed it. But um, you can watch it after it's done. Uh, this video, I think I covered a lot of good stuff. 
With FBA, you say you will sell XX item for X amount. How successful is my sell rate? Really good. <laughs> um, I don't think I have. I, I went through all my listings last night, and I don't have a VCR on Amazon that's older than three months. Um, I don't have any large consumer electronics. I've got some books that have been sticking around for uh, six months, and then I had 85 items out of my like 9,000 that gave me long-term listing fees. Let's see. How much do I personally work a day? I don't know, man, a lot. Um, I got up at 8.30 a.m. today, uh, and I will probably work until midnight or 2 a.m. Yesterday, I got up at 8.30 and worked until 2 a.m. Um, I work a lot. I like working though. Um, I don't know. It's fun for me. Like, so this is me working right now. You know, I'm making a video and I'll make, I'll make five bucks off this video probably, uh, <laughs> on, uh, on YouTube. But it's, you know, I, I would say I probably spend eight hours a day listing and four hours a day thrifting and, a, uh, an hour a day making videos or writing or something fun. All right, guys. I think I'm gonna cut it off right here. Uh, I really appreciate you for, for being here. There's 15 of you right now, so that means a lot of you came in late. Um, and if you like this, if you like making money and like finding ways to make more money selling things that cost $5, if you wanna turn five bucks into 300 bucks, this is the channel for you. Uh, and I don't, I'm not trying to scam you. You know, I'm not trying to like, well, buy my ebook for $5,000 and it'll tell you how to poop gold nuggets. That's not what I'm doing. What I do want to do, I want to have a membership newsletter. You know, that's something in the future I want to do um, where I say what I'm buying and what price and it's like 10 bucks a month and we cap it at a thousand people, but that's down the line. The point is I'm here to help you make more money and be healthier and be happier. If you like that, subscribe. If you don't, I don't know. Go smoke some cigarettes and live in a McDonald's parking lot. See ya.